Okay, welcome to Air Gunner's Edge. Uh, this is going to be an editorial about the magazines for my AT44 QE Long in 22. Uh, I noticed two of the magazines, I was having issues with pellets. They just weren't as accurate as uh, the other two magazines. And I did clean up the other two magazines, but this is pretty much what I do. Um, I do remove the O-rings before I start. This one still has it on. I take this off. I do have pellets in here. I will be taking these out later. Um, but mostly what I do, just to tune these up and just to stop the head and skirt damage, I will take a pellet. I'll usually mark one end, and all I do is just See how that pellet sticks? Oh, all right, that one too. See that one's sticking also. That one's sticking. This one I haven't worked it yet. But these should actually fall right through. The only thing that should hold these pellets in are the O-rings. So as this is getting pushed in You're getting damage on the skirt, and you could be damaging the head. See, all these are sticking. <clears throat> now this one I've already done. They drop right through, no problem. No damage to the skirt, no damage to the heads. <clears throat> you get the most consistent shots. And I noticed I was not getting consistent shots with this. Um, Pretty much all I did, like I said, I marked whichever one was I was having an issue with. This is a chainsaw file. Um, I just give it a quick clean out, just check the holes. And what I usually do is just roll up some 800, 800 grit. That's the good one. I'll keep that aside. 800 grit, and this is a little thick actually. Roll it up to most even cylinder shape. And I just run it through like this until the pellet will drop through. Just make sure you check your pellet very well so you're not trying to push a pellet with a bent skirt through because then it'll never go. And this is just something I do. I prefer the, as much accuracy as I can. I do believe I made a video on this before, but since I was having issues again, my gun is all tuned up, uh, trigger work, um, I adjusted uh, the spring for the hammer, and uh, actually the I did a little cleaning up inside. I also have the regulator on it, and I plugged almost all the holes drilled, tapped on the tube, and blocked all those. So the transfer port is going, is a direct shot. My gun is absolutely amazing now. Uh, but this is just something I'm doing. I clean this one up, this one is all good. Um, I consistently stay using the JSB 18s for my gun. This is what I, Oh, sorry, that's the 25. This is the, <laughs> this actually I want over here. Well, either way, it's the 18. There we go. I just stick with this. This is what my gun is tuned for. So I don't keep switching ammo. I don't keep switching, trying different pellets. I know what this shoots, and I can be consistent with the same pellet over and over. Uh, once in a while, I will, if I want something heavier, and I know I want a little more, penetration I uh, usually if I can find them uh, Barracuda Hunter these things are also very good in this gun whoops my bad and occasionally well probably more than occasionally Well, anyways, I pretty much just use 
those so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pick up a few more magazines and uh, so to keep these separate and I'm checking these all with the JSB so I know these are going to be specifically for JSB only it's going to be very difficult to tell so what I'm going to do and I just happen to have some here since JSB is red already I'm just going to take some Dicom layout red uh, this adheres very well to it, so I'm just going to coat them in red, so I instantly know these are for JSB, JSB 18s only. They come out pretty good. I've already done one, and uh, well, I just tested a spot, so I'll that way I'll always know these are specifically fitted for them, and these will always consistently work for those. Because if I try putting any other pellet in here, the skirts may be different. It may not fit. I may need to enlarge the other ones for different pellets. So I'm going to have specifically three or four just for JSB. But I just thought I'd share this with you. I just need to find my acetone. And... You could use uh, dentured alcohol, I guess. But alcohol on... Aluminum is never good. Acetone either, but that's why I'm going to be coating them with the Dicon. Uh, Dicom, sorry. <clears throat> it pays to have uh, worked at a machine shop. you used to using that. Uh, anytime you use acetone, I always suggest rubber gloves. You do not actually want this absorbing into your skin. That's uh, pretty much a no-no. And uh, I'm pretty old. I've had all this crap on my skin. Not like nowadays, mechanics have gloves for everything. We didn't have that back in the uh, yesteryears, I guess you could say. So we didn't wear a breathing mask either when we painted. Well, I kind of did, but it's not like today. I'm just going to take the acetone. I'm going to clean this all up. Gets rid of all the oils, everything else. Now, if you were to use like a paint pen marker, this would actually put a build on here. And if it gets in the holes, then you're going to just have to start over again, or you will have build up on the sides. So the marker, I stay away from. And this will leave no build up on these. This is just something I do. I prefer as much accuracy as possible. I just like to be able to identify them as easy and as fast as possible since they will be specifically tuned for these pellets. And also on the other one, I face, as you can see the shininess. I prefer a piece of marble or glass and I will just the face only you can only do it this with the face and I'll show you why see that little nub here you do not want to shorten that otherwise it will be sloppy and you do not want to mess with that so just the face only and I look for any casting that may be on here and I will lightly take that down there a little more light over here sorry but yes just the face and anytime I face anything just very lightly and this is 800 grit it just goes a little faster if you use anything finer like 12 or 1000 grit so I like 800 takes no time at all for this to dry I'm just gonna use the top Just dry it off real fast. <clears throat> but this is just uh, one way to help me identify which magazine is for what pellet. Since I specifically 
use only certain pellets and these are fitted for certain pellets. And I really should have another glove while doing that because my fingers are going to be red. Honestly, I don't have to do the whole thing. I just figured it'll look better if I do. So. I actually thought about having these anodized and uh, I'm not going to pay the money for that. So, Because they will wear and I can always just recoat it with this if I need to. So this will be my JSB magazine. This will wipe away and you will just have a light coating of red. It won't look this bright. If it gets in the holes, no big deal because it will leave no buildup. I still will run a piece of sandpaper through it, but. I could just let it sit a little longer, but all I want to do is be able to identify it. It would look better, nice shiny red and all that, but I'm not really trying to accomplish that i'm not painting it i'm just trying to identify it so these will have a light red mark on it now <clears throat> so i can instantly grab my jsbs and i know this will be for my jsb i'll redo it just to uh give a little more color but at least that can identify it a little more easier i also have blue daikon so if uh daikon sorry i always say that wrong so if I do want to change it over, say the other one for uh, for the Barracuda Extreme, I can. Uh, my regulated tube, I just switch that out for full power to unregulated tube. And that is the beautiful thing about Hatson. If I want full power, I can just throw in a fresh full tube and I got full power. And uh, if I plan on taking out anything a little bit bigger than a regulated gun, other than my plinking but yeah just to show you I mean I'll redo this and it will <clears throat> get a little darker on the red but I just thought I'd share this with everyone um, can or cannot do it but one thing I would advise you don't have to dye it but definitely clean the holes out take the rubber piece off carefully find the best pellet you can the cleanest pellet no bent skirt and like I said, see if it drops through. If not, clean them out. This is all that should be holding those pellets in. When you push that pellet into your uh, breech, it should be nice, clean, no disorientation, uh, no distortion, no bent uh, skirts or any kind of rubbing on the head. And you'll have the most accuracy you can. I mean, it's a PCP. You might as well get as much accuracy as you can out of it. My thinking, and this is the way I am. So... I want hole in hole every possible time I can. Uh, no question about it. I want the best chance of being the most accurate. All right, um, just thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, like I said, the rolled up 800 grit. I'll go in through both sides, clean them all up. I'll redo this one and uh, I'll continue with the other ones and I'm gonna just double check the others also. So. I just thought I'd share that with you. Oh, sorry. And one other one I use. The Barracudas. I love these things in here also. My gun pretty much likes them. So, But the JSB is pretty much what I use. So, Alright. Uh, that's probably it for this little uh, tidbit. I just thought I'd share with everyone. And uh, I hope this helps anyone out. But if for accuracy, I advise you to actually do this. And... Because I was getting, like I said, two magazines that were should have been shooting as good as the other two, and they just weren't. And after I pushed it out, I actually pushed the pellet back out, and I saw the bent skirt. Not bent, but you could see the distortion on it. So, All right, and uh, everybody, good shooting, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good one. Oh. And uh, my new PCP should be here 
tomorrow so I'm hoping to do an editorial on that um, I mean it's been done on this gun before not too much but I'm just gonna go over it see what I like about it and I want to see how to take it apart because I have not found I've only found one video so far on disassembly of this air rifle. I'll just say it's the Hats and Flash in 25 cal. Uh, this will be my hunting gun. And uh, I really haven't seen anything on disassembly too much. So I'm really hoping to dive into that one. Um, probably adjust the hammer on it <clears throat> after quite a bit of testing right out of the box. That's, of course, a must. <clears throat> See how it's performing. And then I'll mess around with the hammer spring and uh, maybe the port. Uh, the Hatson Flash does have a regulator you can get for it now. But the 25 is just all about power. And I'm not looking for shot count, but I am looking for consistency. Whether the 25 is actually going to be worth putting a regulator in, I don't know. I think I can do enough tinkering to get it very accurate and powerful if it was a 177 even maybe a 25 then i would think about a regulator but this this is going to be strictly hunt and gun put big holes in things and uh one shot and i don't want to see anything moving all right and uh till i do that uh get my new uh pcp in i will see you all later